Well, well, welcome to the Scuttlebutt, the Scuttlebutt podcast podcast. There are lots of drinks, there are no rules, and it is a lot of fun. Relax, you are amongst friends. Hey everybody, and welcome back for another crazy and chaotic episode of Scuttlebutt VR. Uh, proud to say that we are probably the most informal uh, virtual reality podcast that exists. It's our formula. We're sticking to it. I'm joined, as always, by my lovely co-host, Hermes Auslander. How you doing today, buddy? I'm doing swell. I'm finally off work. I got through traffic, and here we are. That's the way to be. You just zip over everybody. You know, you just, like, use the tractor beam, pick up cars. I assume you got I, I, some, some sort of alien sh- I'm picturing, like, Rick and Morty. I was going to say, unfortunately, Rick has me beat. I, d- <laughs> I couldn't afford the, the spaceship that he's got, the saucer ship he's got. It's right, like you wrecked it on saucer. the initial landing, you know? I'm still working on getting that one fixed, but... Well, man, as I'm sure that you already know, but for all of our guests, the topic of today is going to be esports. Um, you know, I'm sure that you, e- even as a boomer, you have to have some kind of idea of what esports are. Obviously, it's just video gaming, but in a in a professional sense, in in a real kind of like league. You're you're going big. You know, this is uh this is not just two guys. You know, two brothers in their bedroom fighting over who gets the best controller. Yeah, yeah. See, I thought esports stood for electronic sports. So here we are, updating me. I mean, like, I guess, but it's about more than just, you know, because, like, it, it's not just FIFA and, like, 2K and, like, the sports games. You know, there's PUBG, Call of Duty, Fortnite. Like, you know, you've got, like, a ton of just video games, but not, like, traditional sports necessarily um, that all fall under that esports umbrella. That makes sense. You uh, do you watch any esports? Do you remember the first time that you ever saw like what what the first esports you watched was? None at all. Not even I like have seen stuff on YouTube or. I've seen small clips of of gamers, esport gamers, and uh, saying that this person beat that person, and I think it was like Ninja or something was like a big esports. Hey, that's yes, something. he's. He's probably the most well-known esports person, so we can we can give you a point right there for that one at least. I don't know yeah. what he plays. I don't know how good he is. I've never seen him in action. I just know. Of Do you know name. what color his hair is? Blonde. No, I thought you were gonna get it. It's blue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that's like it's my, it's that's his whole brand. Sense. That that would have not at all. Yeah. It's okay. We would have got there eventually. There's only so many colors in the rainbow. <laughs> uh, for me personally, I would say the first esports that I watched was like Super Smash Brothers back on the GameCube. I watched people at uh, at conventions and stuff, kind of play playing that, and you know everyone would bring their own rig and hook it up, you know, kind of old school with LAN parties, and uh, and yeah, so that was my kind of first experience to like real competitive gaming. Uh, and they, you know, they had a little prize pool that, uh, is, is not the prize pools they have now are way larger. Uh, it's crazy. That's one thing that always yeah, blows bet. my mind thinking about esports. is, uh, is I, I looked it up. Um, where is it here? According to USA today, the 2021, like total prize pool for Fortnite, $9.5 million. Damn. That's a lot of money for being good at Fortnite. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know how to be good at Fortnite. I don't know even know what it entails. <laughs> That's true. That which is kind of crazy because it's. I I feel like everybody played it for a while. That we tried to play Apex Legends, um, and then you know we did. We got the the curse of the slow internet always got us. Although I don't like you have to have really kind of a one internet if you're gonna just download that whole game in one night. I think. That's fair. 
yeah, I, I mean, I, I know what my internet speeds are. They're terrible. I guess comment your internet speeds below and, and let us know, you know, wh- <laughs> like what's the rating we'll do. This is an informal poll with our audience. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm guessing since you ha- haven't watched any up till this point, you don't really have like a huge interest in esports. Uh, no, it's not that I, I. I think it has a like it is interesting to think about where's where it's going. You know, for uh, you know, moving forward, I think it's uh, it's it, when I first was uh, like you said, like Smash Bros. Right back on the GameCube. I once you said that, I was like, oh, I guess yeah, I had some experience with uh, you know, like. Uh, land parties in, in like the barracks. That was one thing that was pretty popular in the barracks. Like get together that makes on the sense. weekends for anybody who couldn't leave. You know, anybody who couldn't leave base. But it wasn't sure. It certainly wasn't like professional. So, uh, uh, but I, was I, there money on the line? About where it's... Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it, it's that we'll call it semi pro. That would be against UCMJ. There was never money involved. Over any gambling <laughs> on military installations. Yeah. I don't even have money. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> but uh, seeing where it has progressed, uh, you know, where it started and where it's come now. And like you said, you know, now there's prize monies in the millions uh, in total. It's, it's, it, it is interesting to see that that's obviously where um, an interest lies and where a lot of kids growing up in our generation and future generations are obviously spending a lot of time, you know, on electronics on, in the digital space. It only makes sense to see that all these sports are going to start popping up there as well. And people who are going to get really, really good at them, you know, are going to start competing against each other. That just makes sense to me. I, I think that really segues well into my next point. I was going to ask what your opinion – like, would you consider, for example, Ninja? Uh, is he an athlete? Because I know that you yourself at one point were an athlete. So, you you know, you've, you've been there uh, in, in one sense. So I'm curious, you know, because there's, there's a lot of that regimentation, you know. you got to put in the time to get good. Uh, and, and in a way, you have to have – considering how long some of these tournaments are, you have to – at least be healthy enough to not, you know, go into diabetic shock midway through an event or something. Yeah. I think it's a, uh, it's that age old uh, question. Uh, I mean, not even age old, but just like our, our own definitions of what athletes are. It's kind of like when NASCAR was becoming a big thing and that people are like, Oh, they're not athletes, but it's like, they're do- doing a very strenuous activity for a very prolonged period of time that wears and tears on the body. And I think it's and just they piss themselves. idea of what, yeah, it's like just, that's the, the what what is more athletic than pissing yourself? That's really <laughs> a challenge well, to anyone it, out it, there. It comes down to it. Can, it comes down to definitions, man. So, like Ninja, to answer your question, uh, I would, I would, I would think he, you know, I would agree that he is an athlete. He's just a different type of athlete, just like a chess, a grandmaster chess player, you know, compared to a, you know, a track star, right? Like I, I ran track, sure. I did football. That was my quote unquote classical athletics, you know, where it was just like more body oriented, right? Whereas, you know, a chess master or maybe like a knowledge bowl contestant or, you know, um a debater, like a two debate a team, master you know, debater. There's, there's a, Potentially there's a you might of, say uh, Yeah. Uh, there's a series of uh I would say of uh quote unquote athletes that are just in different you know athletics and now we just have the electronic uh representation or new addition to that spectrum is all that it is i i think that's a great perspective uh and and like you were saying before i think it is going to be the future um i mean there are several like actual sports franchises that have bought up their own like esports teams that is, are competing in leagues and stuff more just I, I don't really think it's at this point an investment that makes them money as much as it probably is just making sure that they've got yeah. a stake in the future when it is more popular and it yeah. is making money. Uh, and and I, like already, I remember it blew my mind the first time that I was sitting in a sports bar, like an actual sports bar in real life, and I looked up at the TV and it was fucking Overwatch on the TV, and I was like, "Are they really?" And and, and like. I realized it wasn't a YouTube video. It was an actual, like, ESPN 3 or whatever 
was Showa Esports, <laughs> and that's what they had that TV tuned to. And I was like, dude, this is like, I it, stuff yeah. has definitely moved up from where it was back when I was watching people play GameCube. Like, exactly. That, that was the kind of thing where it would get you beat up in a sports bar. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but especially now, speaking of the future and technology, obviously we're in virtual reality. Uh, we, we've played a couple of games that can make you sweat, can really, they bring that physical side of the athletics back into it. Um, and so there are a few like more popular VR esports, uh, Population One and Echo VR are two that come to mind for me. Um, and yeah, they really involve you know, unlike Fortnite, where you're just running around with joysticks and pressing buttons, in Population 1, it's a battle royale where you're, you're really got to shoot and you're swapping mags. And it's, it comes down a lot more to the actual fine motor skills and, and really brings that physical aspect into it. Uh, so do you, do you think that that's going to play a large part in the future of esports? I think, right as you're saying that, I think it is the exact representation of sports currently outside of the digital space and and you know what Mm -hmm. i mean by that is as as you're as you're discussing like oh it's you know it brings in some of the physical aspects of it and my brain was like well how could it bring in more of it right okay we we start hooking up more haptic suit more feedback uh technology so your body is more involved and whatnot and then uh and so therefore there's maybe like this idea of evening the playing field right but then i thought oh well of course there's going to be people that abuse that where it's like you have a faster mag reload or you have more strength than you normally would have coming into the game you have you know but if it's a product that uh, everyone can buy then is it really an advantage like just i mean just like steroids everybody can buy steroids right now you know if you want to i I think that's an unfair comparison i uh i i think it's not that different from like having a different controller you know if you're going to an event you you most times you can bring your own controller and as long as it's not something that you've modified it's a product that can be purchased uh, i think i think really it's the whether it's commercially available and not something i guess that you have to risk your body for it's probably the difference with steroids like i don't know any casual steroid users game uh, you don't know the military because there's a lot of them. <laughs> uh, there's there's uh, there, there's always ways to gain the system. You know that's kind of the point is that, that I'm getting well, at. Sure. It's like you know, it's not just it's not just a specific like anabolic steroid regimen. You know, you know there's TRT, there's hormone therapy, there's you know there's um, uh, blood therapies. You know there's anaerobic and aerobic therapies that you can do that depending on what sport it is can give you unfair advantages or are sure. outlawed or go under the radar currently. And I'm sure, and currently with esports being as new as it is, I well, guarantee And that's what I was going to say, bringing it back little... to esports, there absolutely are. The equivalent would be like wall hacks, for example. So you can see through walls or aim bots that make, you know, it's just really good. And as esports have kind of come along, because like I said, it, it's a lot bigger industry now than it was even five years ago. The the anti cheating and the people watching the judging and stuff has gotten a lot better, um, but to me that's another like benefit of VR. How are you going to have an aimbot in VR? Like, it's going to be very clear to everyone that your physical movements, your dopey ass body, isn't matching up to what's happening on screen at all. Uh, and so it's gonna Look. you're gonna actually have to have that physical ability to back up the representation of what people are seeing. Um, and and kind of on that note, the International Racquetball Federation. I'm sure, we're all big fans of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I literally have never heard of them before this, but they recently sanctioned a VR game called Racket Next VR. Um, and the reason why that's important is it's because it means that VR is now an officially sanctioned sport of a federation that is recognized by the International Olympic Committee. So we're it's like the first step on the way to VR in the Olympics, yeah. baby. Okay, okay. Which is, I would say, the well, ultimate can... in esports. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I support it, man. Like it's, like we said, it's the natural evolution. I don't see how it, it's, you know, it's yeah. why you would stop it or could stop it or like that. It's where we're going, and uh, yeah, yeah. I guess uh, as it's just that um, 
uh, not even chicken and the egg, but almost like that uh, evolution of one side and the other side, right? It's like, you know, one side figures out mm -hmm. how to uh, a wall hack. The next one figures out how to prevent that from happening, how to find out when people are wall hacking. Next one would be like people getting the aimbot in VR and looking funny, and then therefore figuring out how to do that hack without looking funny, you know, having like a. Sure, you gotta learn. You or, get, it's you know, like lip syncing, that... but full body. Yeah, you know, and then we figure out how we can recognize that better, how we can have a counter algorithm to recognize when they're using things like that. So it's like, it's just gonna be this back and forth. Well, the really cool thing, thing probably gonna be. that may, that helps a lot now with, you know, YouTube and Twitch streaming is that you can have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people sometimes watching these games and these people. And so you have just like so much manpower that's willing to step forward and go, no, look, that was completely, you know, mm -hmm. that wasn't right. And I, I clipped it like here's the video proof. Uh, and then it gets shared around yeah. a button. So, like, the accountability, I think, has gone up a lot. Like, in my experience, sportsmanship is, is pretty good in esports. Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of really sore losers that weren't also cheaters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a good point and, and, and one to, uh, like, remember going forward as, like, a caveat. Like, th this uh... – this uh, space of athletics, you know, this electronic space, digital space for athletics might be, you know, bridging this new gap or, you know, giving us this new space for better sportsmanship and, be you know, more accountability, like you said, and just breeding a better, safer, more equal environment, you know, by and large. You know, maybe I'm just paranoid because I <laughs> didn't come from a more accountable area where people could and can take steroids and just do what the fuck they want do and it's like well, all right well i'm not gonna do that so i guess i'm out of the race now you know whereas this would be more accountable and therefore you don't really have that decision to make you know so i was kind of waiting till the uh the end here till we really kind of established more of of what esports is and kind of what we're talking about in today's day and age specifically in the vr sense but but since you're talking about steroids and we're comparing the different you know what would can be comparable problems in esports uh, are, are you aware that there actually is a performance enhancing drug problem that's been rampant in esports the entire time adderall you got it my guy yeah there are <laughs> but like it, it, it is insane the amount of esports players that have adhd uh it's most of them mm -hmm. and uh it always seems to really get the worst right before a match you know it's just so darn stressful Yep, can't focus. Got to focus up now. And uh and yeah, so that like that already but like you said, it's a thing that's prescribed and even though that's not a thing that's accessible to all competitors, it's also really not fair to be like, "Well, you have a medical condition, so now you're, you know, Ill ineligible." So it's like, I don't know, does that it's just like, "Okay, two Adderall for everyone coming in the door. It's up to you if you take them or not." Like no, I don't think I don't think that's a. I don't. I mean, if you have a medical condition, uh, and it's a disqualifying condition based on a set parameters that a majority of the people, you know, agree upon. Because again, like we're talking about, you know, who do we cater to? Do we cater to the minority in order to make it easier for the minority to access a majority activity like life or sports or whatever? That's a discussion to be had. Is it the opposite? Do we I mean, cater to the majority? People playing at the highest the level sport? of any sport are going to – like, they're technically the minority. Yeah. Exactly. But you well, need I mean, them yeah, to have the highest sport. level of sport. So, you know, you, you kind of have well, to cater to them in one sense. Eh, that's, that's, that's a question of whether or not we're titrating that for the majority – or for the minority, rather. Like – are we are we prov are we putting up roadblocks for the entry for the basis entry so that only those that are getting to the top are those with this specific you know percentage of unfair advantage or you know are we keeping it are we having a level foundation playing field in order to get to that top are these actually the best or are these just the best because they have all of these preset conditions outside of what you know the majority you know it's like there there's a whole you got to have preset conditions to be the best box. sometimes you know like that Michael Jordan, Kobe will tell you about that, you know. He's got all those pre you gotta have yes. drive, motive no I'm 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 playing, man. I completely agree with what you're saying. Honestly, I think the easiest, if not the most fair solution, is not to outright disqualify anyone, 
but to just you know be like hey we're we're drug testing people these are the list of things that are not allowed if you were not able to participate like we're sorry for that hopefully mm-hmm. you're able to manage your condition for a couple of days without medication or whatever the case is and you know that's that's going to suck for a lot of people like i wouldn't want to hear that if i was entering something but i'd feel a lot better if you were telling sure. me about it at the beginning instead of like it being a controversy yeah. after the fact and you're trying to take a title from me that i feel like i rightfully earned yeah and and it would come down to what specific you know d- does it ultimately hold weight because if you're talking about things like bodybuilding right you can't get body you can't get you know hulk style oh yeah just book, yoked you know proportions and shit you just it's phys- you just it's impossible that's a no no that's fact. not and so it's like there's it's, gonna, it's unhealthy there's like there's gonna be some level <laughs> Well, there's going to be some level, yeah, but, I mean, if we're talking about the sport of bodybuilding, which I'm not a part of, so I'm not, like, an expert here, but, like, if we're going to talk about something that you can't achieve otherwise, then are we just accepting the fact that this sport, you need X, Y, and Z? So if you're going to enter that sport, you just that's something you have to accept. Same with, like, football, right? Like, CTE is a real thing, and now that we know about it, mm-hmm. you know, if, if I was to have a kid that wanted to play football, it's like, okay— this is something that you know exists. If this is your decision to to then play, then you just have to realize that that is you know the nature of the beast. That is the sport. And if you want to do baseball, that's not the case. Or if you want to do track, that's not the case. So these are sure. Right there are other things away. you can but do and not get is, hit in the head. Yeah, there's. But the reality is, you know, with esports, if you're going to be like you said, the top yeah. level tier Overwatch or whatever, you have to realize that everybody who's at that level is on fucking Adderall. So are you also going to be on Adderall and be at that top level? I'm here, not going to say everyone like, is, but it, it's a rampant issue for sure. Um, but you, you bring I, up another really you know good point saying. as far as differing, you know, sports. Cause I, you could make a fair argument that depending on like what game that a person is playing could be considered a different sport. Um, you know, for example, yeah. if it's something that's really slow paced, like a tactical thing that, you know, takes forever for stuff to play out. Like, yeah, it makes a lot more sense that you would be taking your Adderall medication to be able to, like, sit through that. You know, it doesn't give you that quick Mm -hmm. react. You know, you're not able to really get in the zone like someone who would be playing Fortnite or Overwatch would need to. So I think that's another important consideration of, like, what game are we even talking about? Yeah, yeah. Does it have advantages or not? Yeah. This really makes me want to look up if, uh, you know, there's any kind of performance-enhancing drugs that aren't allowed in chess. Because I feel like that would be really similar to, like, a slower game. Yeah, I, want, um, I should know. And I want to say I want to say there isn't, but I don't know for sure. I have no idea. <laughs> well, we should just sign up for a tournament, show up completely fucking loaded, and then see what happens. I... I I did I mean I I uh I uh I did it when I was a kid but obviously they weren't drug testing the kids so I don't know if <laughs> if in like high level chess tournaments they are God you know? I miss being a kid Right <laughs> you could get away with anything <laughs> Yeah when you could not just get drug tested for stuff Right that those was were the easy. days those were the, easy, those were the easy days That was back when I was no testing rent, the drugs No bills <laughs> No rent no bills and Lots of good drugs that nobody tested me for. Uh, Do you have any final thoughts on esports? <laughs> uh, I I think uh, final thoughts would be um, there. I'm excited for where it goes because that day when we can hook up to the Matrix, you best believe that all those people that have injuries and are and are aging, you know, guilty. Uh, I will be certainly um, enjoying the benefits of having a virtual body that has, you know, the stats that I put into it to and feels like I'm running or, you know, tackling or doing whatever, shooting, right. you know, in a gives you actual, that real feedback, you know, realistic sense. Exactly. I will be signing up and immediately enjoying that as like, you know, my my second avatar, my second being. So right, that's I'm it. I'm checking out a normal course. life. Not necessarily, but like, you know, you know, when you when you reach sixty, there's just a you know a fact of the matter is you're not gonna be running a hundred meters at the pace you were running it. But 
possibly you can get you can scratch that itch similar to like demio you know you can scratch that itch slightly at time to time you know in the matrix you know where you can run the 100 meters and you can have that slight uh adrenaline uh like preparatory you know uh um not sting but like uh you know like sensation when you're waiting for that gun to go off you're in the block like you can't get that anywhere else and, and you can't re-experience that after you've you know aged out of it so it's like things mm -hmm. like that could scratch an itch that people otherwise in biology and everyday normal life can't so i'm excited for that bring it on yeah man i hear you uh you mentioned demio is that gonna be your new esport are you are you making an esports team we're gonna we're gonna I have take it by storm about it. We're gonna get we're gonna get really good. We're gonna spend all the time just to get cracked. Demio take a bunch of Adderall, and then we'll we'll take. They, now they just need to organize a tournament. Somebody put some money up. Hey, I will I will sign up for that tournament. I will even put in an entry fee to help put like a pot together, sort of like poker and stuff you know like i'll pay a 50 dollar entry fee oh yeah yeah can, we'll, uh, we'll pay in because it's gonna pay off yeah to... <laughs> you know what i wish demio would do you know is uh i i really want more options and hopefully with more people playing it they will see the need for it and therefore they'll expand like the care character uh choices you know abilities maps all of that stuff so it's like a full-fledged D D substitute or alternative and yeah i think i, I think I they're gonna keep growing it not blowing up right <laughs> to the to moon <laughs> I'll yeah I, coin. I basically feel the same way on esports uh like i said i'm gonna keep watching them. i've mostly been watching vr esports now because i just find them to be a lot more interesting and engaging you know i look at somebody and i'm like wow they're really good at what they're doing because they're physically doing it uh and it's it's really cool to see some of the setups sometimes too you know because they have like these huge warehouse rooms that are all mapped out so everyone has their own little zone that you can't cross and it's kind of crazy because you have this insane sport going on inside but like in reality it's just a bunch of people in cubicles basically uh and it's <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah it, it very much looks like the matrix that's all we are, man. We're just on a different time scale, so we can't see the full effects of it. But, you know, when our perspective shifts to years being a day, you're going to see this huge... All right, everybody. Uh, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for watching Scuttlebutt VR. And uh, if you subscribe to our channel, we will release the hostages immediately. Just slowly like no, the won't. video. If you leave a comment down below... Nobody gets hurt.